let's go over the basic construction of three molecules, carbon dioxide, methane, and then ammonia. We're going to draw the Lewis structures of each of these. Remember, this is a one-dimensional representation. A lot of these molecules have a 3D shape and a 3D geometry that is also just as important because that is how they will look like uh, in quote-unquote real life. But how do we do this? Like, let's uh, first look, first of all, at carbon dioxide. So this is how you want to do this. Uh, you want to annotate um, how many valence electrons are needed to construct this molecule because it's the valence electrons that are going to form the bonds. So carbon uh, is happy at four. Okay, oxygen is happy at six, but we don't have one oxygen. We have two oxygens, so that's going to give us 12. The molecule is neutral, so um, 12 plus 4. We have to get 16 valence electrons. That is our task, to get 16 valence electrons around the carbon dioxide molecule. So um, the easiest thing for the central atom is to pick carbon. Um, I would say it's not easy to have oxygen as your central atom because you don't know which oxygen would it be. Okay, is it going to be uh, one of the oxygens or is it going to be other oxygen in carbon dioxide because there's two oxygens. Which one is it? So uh, carbon will be our central atom. Okay, carbon loves four. Now you just have to think, um, how do I get four around carbon? Uh, well, you can get four around carbon by constructing a double bond. So we're going to have a double bond to this oxygen here. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, a double bond to the oxygen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we need 16 valence electrons. We already got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that is the correct representation for the structure of carbon dioxide. Let's take a look at formal charge and uh, octet rule consideration. Uh, let's do the formal charge for this carbon here. So formal charge 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon is happy at 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Let's do, do the octet rule for this carbon here. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the octet rule is satisfied, though there's many exceptions to the octet rule. You can definitely, definitely play fast and loose with it. Okay, let's look at this oxygen here. Um, this oxygen and this oxygen are actually the same thing because they both have a double bond to the same carbon. So let's look at the formal charge for this oxygen here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oxygen is happy at six. Six minus six is zero. Let's look at the octet rule for this oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that bond gets counted as it's shared uh, equally between the carbon and the oxygen. So the octet rule is satisfied. So what is the structure? Okay, so remember all molecules are three-dimensional entities. So what is the structure of the CO2? Uh, this is where you're going to use uh, two tables in your textbook. Uh, I'm not going to have you memorize them, but um, you can definitely consult them for the test. Um, first of all, the central atom is carbon. Okay, the central atom is carbon and there's no lone pairs. So we, got, so we have two bonds. I'm going to count this double bond as a bond. Um, it just happens to be a double bond. We've got two bonds, one bond, two bonds, and zero lone pairs, right? Do we see that? Two bonds and zero lone pairs. So two bonds and zero lone pairs, we're going to use table 10-1 in your book. And again, uh, I want you to em uh, emphasize that we're looking at the central atom that has no lone pairs. So um, just highlight this here central atom with no lone pairs. See? Central atom, no lone pairs. Central atom with no lone pairs. Okay, so if we have central atoms with lone pairs, central atoms with lone pairs, then we will not use table 10.1 in your textbook. We will use table 10.2. That's for the consideration with lone pairs. Uh, we're looking for how the uh, no lone pairs or the presence of lone pairs alters the geometry, so how it alters the overall geometry of the molecule. So two bonds, uh, no lone pairs, two bonds, zero lone pairs, that will be a linear molecule. 
So CO2 is an example of a linear molecule. Okay, two bonds, zero lone pairs. Two bonds, zero lone pairs. So that's linear. That would be the molecular geometry. And uh, the three-dimensional structure would be sort of like this. Okay, it's just a straight line, right? Carbon, oxygen, here's our double bond, here's our double bond. Okay, linear molecule, perfect bond angle of 180 degrees. The next thing we want to look at is hybridization. So hybridization is actually the mixing of orbitals. So what orbitals can we mix? We can mix an S, we can mix a D, we can mix a D. Uh, and that's all we're going to mix for now. We can all, um, we're not going to worry about the f orbital. So two bonds and zero lone pairs, how can we get to two? Uh, we're going to take one of the s and one from the p. So one s plus one p gives us two, and that's going to give us our two bonds. So this is an sp hybridized carbon. Okay, we're talking about hybridization and what orbitals we mix in order to get the double bonds. So 1s is 1, plus 1 from the p is 2, so it's an sp hybridized orbital. And then finally, this is a nonpolar molecule. So how do I know and say unequivocally it's a nonpolar molecule? Because this oxygen, which is electronegative, is pulling this way. That's going to be tugging at it, making a partial negative charge for the left end of the molecule. Uh, but we have an equal and opposite pulling of the oxygen at the other end of the, the right-hand end of the molecule. So this vector cancels out with that vector. This is a nonpolar molecule. So a bond angle of a perfect 180 degrees. No lone pair, so you get very nice geometry. And this is an sp hybridized carbon because we're taking one from the s and one from the p, and that's going to be sp for the hybridized carbon to give us the two bonds with no lone pairs.